How you doing? Uh, how you doing, guys? Good morning. Um, before I get to the topic at hand, which is of course mostly about Pixelmator Classic and Pixelmator Pro as well, is um, during uh, I guess 2013 um, I bought the 2013 Mac Pro when it came out. I was also looking for a different application to edit my photos primarily. I was using uh, Adobe Lightroom standalone version for Mac. Um, which they don't do anymore uh, because I didn't want to pay a subscription price to a uh, Lightroom uh, Creative Cloud version. Of course, since they depreciated the standalone version, they don't update it anymore. So I knew eventually it would stop working. Uh, I wouldn't get any features and things like that. So I was looking for a replacement. Of course, during the 2013, Pixelmator came out. Uh, which I like their concept because they use the entire power of the 2013 Mac Pro with the dual graphic um, workstation graphics and everything. So they utilize all the um, technologies of the new Mac Pro, which is great. And they still do uh, with Pixelmator Pro. Now, there's two things that I really hated uh, about Pixelmator Classic, uh, which virtually made it unusable for me. Uh, not saying that it's a great application in and of itself, but just hear me out. So, um, first reason I really hated it was the floating window design, believe it or not, which is very reminiscent of the open source GIMP. Uh, I would find out that while floating window design can be useful, I found it more of a hindrance for me. Of course, this is my personal preference, not everybody else's, but floating window design uh, it would tend to cover other windows. Uh, or go underneath other windows and it it was kind of a mess. Um, I, I like the um, one application window design if possible, well, possibly two. You can maybe split it up with dual monitor or something like that. But um, and uh, second reason why I hated Pixelmator Classic, um, the, uh, most of all is um, the, the text was so small, I, I could virtually not read it. Um, the way I have my computer set up, I have my uh, ultra wide screen monitor on the wall with a uh, table in front of it. So I'd actually have to stand up and then lean way into the monitor, see the little tiny text uh, for the application. And there was no way to change the text size on, on Pixelmator. So uh, without uh, changing the re resolution of the screen, and uh, it was just kind of a mess, so I rarely used it. Um, and those are the really two reasons. Not the technology behind it um, didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, the the features, the the way they did things, I didn't have a problem with that. But those two reasons alone. Now, um, when Pixelmator Pro came out, um, I finally decided. Of course, uh, I just recently bought it maybe a month ago, as I love Pixelmator Pro. Um, wonderful design, rethought out. I can actually see the text now. And so uh, we're going to go a little bit more into uh, Pixelmator Pro and why I love it. All right, here are, uh, we are on my uh, Mac desktop, and um, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Pixelmator Pro and why I love this application. Much more useful. Uh, for me now than the classic version. Now we're going to take a look at the uh, create an empty document first. Now I'm sure the uh, classic version had this as well, but I didn't really utilize this until the uh, Pixelmator Pro version. Now with the blank doc documents, it uses the most um, standard uh, types. It could be um, paper size, um, photo size. Since I do film and video, uh, all that's covered as well, 8K, cinema, 2K, 1080p, 4K, whatever, which is great as well. Social, which I found the, the most useful as well, because it covers things like for my YouTube channel with the uh, YouTube channel header, a YouTube video thumbnail as well. Um, so can create a blank document for the right uh, dimensions, which is great. And uh, we're going to cancel out of that and go and open a photo. And uh, let me see if we can get that. Uh, new from photo. There we go. And uh, I think I'm, I'm going to choose this one right here just to show you the interface. Um, love this design right here. Um, 
usually your layers are going to be on the left and all your tools on the right. Now even though with the uh, classic version you had the floating windows which was um, technically a lot more customizable you would usually end up having to rearrange it uh, depending on your use. You can um, fairly customize um, Pixelmator Cla or Pro version uh, to, uh, two different ways. If you go into Preferences and then to Workspaces here, then you can arrange and it even gives you a picture to show you what it looks like uh, for the different uh, basic configurations and you can even create your own and uh, it allows you to customize within each preference and then you can add it down here to your list. And uh, you can also customize it uh, for your view for like um, customize layout or layout in your tools in your toolbar. And here you can activate or uh, deactivate whatever tools you want to show in the toolbar on the right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about layers. I love the way they with layers you can go into uh, use the layers as thumbnails and it will do uh, from the the lower base layer all the way up. And I love their hierarchy. Before it used to have little um, sub menus and it would get very distracting and, and hard to use. So I love this thumbnail feature right here. Then obviously you can change it to your needs and uh, you can also hide both the layers and the uh, tools on the right. At least if I can do it right there. If you just want to concentrate on the photo itself or whatever you're working on. So uh, love that as well. And I find this uh, uh, Pixelmator Pro a lot more intuitive than the classic version as well. Of course, they added a lot new fee a uh, lot new fe lot of new features. I can't talk there. Uh, it's early in the morning. Um, and they integrated kind of like uh, machine learning. AI uh, and they based this on um, I think they said it was a million photos they uh, done this AI and it doesn't do too bad of a job actually so if you're in a hurry you can use a lot of the uh, machine learning uh, or ML uh, enhanced to fix the picture um, of course you can go in there and tweak um, tweak it as well for instance um, we could auto correct white balance right here just to show you and then it chooses it right here and then you can flick it on and off just to see the difference which is really not a whole lot and you can go in here and tweak it even if uh, you think it needs some adjustments you can do that as well we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn that back as well and um, so you can basically cover everything for photo editing which is what I want of course uh, I also use it to make thumbnails which I'm not gonna go into right now and the most important feature it has is I can actually see the text. Um, before um, the um, classic design was um, really way too small and um, very hard to read the text. Here I can see it plain as day, which uh, makes this um, Pixelmator Pro a lot more useful. And I'm finding it, I'm actually using it every, almost every time I use um uh, video on my YouTube channel. I now I've been making some thumbnails because it's far easier to use uh, than the prior versions. And of course, I think this is why um, um, the, the developers decide to depreciate um, Pixelmator Classic for those reasons as well. They will. Uh, you can if you bought the classic version, you can still continue to download it and use it. But they're, I don't think they're going to be de developing it anymore, which I think is, is um, the correct way to go. Um, if you already have classic version, you can upgrade um, pretty cheaply. I think you can get it for $20. And I actually got this on a Christmas sale as well for $20 instead of the regular $40. So go check it out, the uh, Pixelmator Pro. Um, very useful uh, for me, and uh, I love this application. So thanks for watching, and see you guys later.